that's what I was reading this morning. Praise God. He said, out of the depths, I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you, there's forgiveness so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for, he said it twice. More than watch, he said it, it must be very important. More than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is what? Unfailing love. And with him is what? Full of redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. And he did through Jesus. There are some things only God will do. There are some things only God is able to do. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Only God is able to do. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. Guess what? You're going to have to watch for the Lord in this season of life. You, that means my focus is off of everything else and that my focus is on God. Amen. As we start our fasting tomorrow, we're going to be keeping our eyes upon the Lord. We're going, brother, we're going to go to um, 21 day fast, 6, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're going to be praying and the word. I'm going to give some scriptures and stuff like that in the second service. But we're going to be praying, seeking the Lord, killing the flesh, so we can get God a little bit more. There's some things that we're going to have to get on our knees. Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. Somebody be good. We're going to go to 7 um, Genesis 18. Because last week I did, um, on Thursday, I put... Uh, taught about the blessing of obedience, right? And how God came to Abraham and checked him and began to say to him, if you walk in obedience and keep my covenant, this is what's going to happen. This is what I'm going to do for your life. And, and one of the things is God promised Abraham a child, yes. but he, he listened to his wife and went to get Hagar. But God came back that's the part sometimes when you substitute what God told you because God didn't come fast enough for you. Uh -huh. God was not quick enough to make it happen. You begin to be your own God and make things happen. And, and you want God to bless that. Because the thing about it, he went to, um, Abraham went to God and he said, make that Ishmael may live before you. And God said, no, 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 no. I told you that your wife is going to have a son. Amen. I told you, 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 you know, the, the child's going to come from her. Amen. So when you look at it, we can't substitute God's blessing because if God allow you to substitute, that means that God is a liar. And we know that God is not a man that you should lie or a son of man that you should repent. If he said it, guess what's going to happen? It will surely come to pass. God don't work with substitutes. Amen. The only time something to come if 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 it's God's will, Amen. Amen. If it's God, if He told you He's gonna do something, guess what? Surely He's gonna do it. And guess what? He got the promise at seventy-five. And guess what? God came knocking at the door at ninety-nine years old. It's never too late for God to bless you. And I know that you've been waiting a long time, but it's never too late. And I believe this is where we picked up on um, Genesis 18. Amen? Amen? There are certain things that's not going to happen until you walk into obedience. Mm -hmm. What is obedience? Well, you can't say obedience is something right. Obedience is, is doing what God calls you to do. If you do something different than what God calls you to do, guess what? It's not obedient. If your parent told you, go open the door, and you ignore and go open the back door, guess what you just did? You opened the door, but you opened the wrong door, I told you. Yeah, I told you open the front door, but you opened up the back door. 
Guess what you are? Even though you opened the door, you're still disobedient because you did not listen to direct things that I told you to do. Now look at this here. Genesis 18. I'm not going to be long before. I'm going to preach on that. I'm ready to reserve all my energy for the afternoon. Really, because mm -hmm. there's really something I'm talking about that's really going to change your life today. It's really going to change your life. Brother, I'm excited about this teaching. Really. There's a blessing that you don't even know about. I don't even think you're aware of it. I don't want to give you the name. I don't want you to go check. I don't want you to go check nothing. You come this afternoon, it really, we're going to decree some stuff in here. We're going to lay hands on here. We're going to go all out. I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like an Ezekiel word, girl. <laughs> just, just girl on myself. I'm ready to. I'm ready to go in because this, we going to get this here thing today. Tell somebody this is the hors d'oeuvre before the dinner. This is the hors d'oeuvre before the dinner. You know how you go get on. Um, this is what do you want, you know? Um, the appetizer, chicken wing, buffalo wing, nuggets. Uh, well, this is the appetizer. Tell somebody this is the snack. But dinner is coming. So, so I can't give you too much snack so that you can't eat, all right? So I'm going to give you a taste. You're going to ooh, good. Mm -hmm. Get you ready for dinner. Amen. Praise God. So this is what this is about right now. Amen. My, 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 my topic this morning is the blessing will make you laugh. The blessing will make you laugh. God's going to make you laugh. The blessing of God. It's going to make you laugh. What God is about to do in the season is like, oh, he's going to make you laugh. Lord have mercy. Now, Genesis 18, 1, I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mammon. Do you, do you notice that after um, Genesis 17, he changed his name from Abram to Abraham? And God never told him Abram no more. He began to call him Abraham because I have to call you a name that's attached to your destiny. I, I don't care about, see, Abram was the disobedient one, was the liar, was the one that, that didn't do right. But God's saying that I have to call you a new name for a new season. My God. I can't, because when, when I call you the new name, I'm no longer remembering what you did and what happened. So Abraham, the Lord appeared to Abram near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of, to his tent. And the heat of the day, it could be 12 p.m. or it could be 3, 3 p.m., the heat of the day. You know when the day that is actually hot. Yes. It's a swimming hot between 12 or 3, right? Uh -huh. Back home, it's hot between those times. Yes. 12 or 3, that's when you get a little treat and you relax yourself, you get up the heat. Yes. Amen. So, so he was in the tent house, right? So Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he buried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bow down to the Lord to the ground. Now, I, I, I'm going to have some things to say about this, right? He said, if I found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass you, do not pass your servant by. Now look at this. It said three men. It didn't say three angels. Three men came to Abraham and one of them was God. So what does that mean? Can God come up to you? You don't make no he was God. Can God come as a man and you didn't know that he well we, we well we know that happened with through Jesus. But I'm saying that back in those days, he came in and he talked with Abraham. But Abraham knew, he said, he said, Lord, he called him Lord. L-O-D, meaning um, the, 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 the Hebrew is Adonai, the, the owner and the ruler of all things. He said, Lord, that's the owner of everything. That God is the owner. So one of them was, was the spirit of, well, it's our man. It was God. He said it was a man. He didn't say he was an he didn't say he was a man. He talked with him. He talked with him. Look at this. He said, if I found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Now, let 
let a little water be brought and that you may all wash your feet and rest under his feet uh, on this tree. Now that's why um, in, in the New Testament it said that be careful how you entertain strangers because you may entertain strange uh, angels unaware. So that what does that mean? Don't treat people bad. You don't know who, who it is. Mm -hmm. When people walk up in here, don't treat them bad. When you walk on the way, you you know that that guy on the street that look like a bum. Could it be that it could be the Lord? Amen. Okay. Don't treat people bad because you don't know who they are under the skin. Amen. You don't know who they are under the skin. Now he said, look at this. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. Now look at this here. Um, he told him, refresh yourself, get yourself together. So he says, very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Remember that at this point, he no longer called her Sarah. Guess what I said on, 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 on Thursday? If he go up, she got to go up. She can no longer be Sarah. She got to be what? Sarah. So now he called her Sarah. He never called her what she used to be, but what she is. He said, quick. He said, get three seed of the finest flour and knead it and make some, some bread. Now I want to hear this, right? That's why, you know, you got to be able to listen to direction. What if she said, well, I'm not going to make nothing. You go make it. <laughs> you go, Abraham. You go make it yourself. She said, okay. Then, then he ran to the herd and select a choice in the cap and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk in the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Now look at this here. You got to know how to, you know, even in the place of worship, you got to know how to serve the presence while he's in the presence of you. Uh -huh. You got to know what to do with the spirit of God when God's spirit come in. And you notice Abraham, that, that he didn't get all up on his face. He stood afar off and watched them. Sometimes you got to watch what God is doing. You got to observe the presence. You got to be able to, to just enjoy what God is doing. It's not about going crazy, but just being in the presence of God. Let him do what he got to do in your life. Let him bless you. Come on. Let him touch you. Let him do what he got to do with you. Sometimes just allow him to be who he is to you. My God have mercy. And he said, what? Look at this. After he have served. And that also could look at the sacrifice. How you sacrifice before the Lord. What do you do in the present? We all know the sacrifice we got to give God is a sacrifice of praise. What do you do when God's presence is not a place that's close to you? What do you do when God is near you? Do you just shut your mouth or do you give him the praise? Do you worship him? They were serving God. They were doing all kinds of things. But he said, where is your wife Sarah? They asked him. He said, she's there in the tent. He said, right? Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. God is going to give you something you never even asked for. Mm -hmm. See, this thing that, see, God is the one that came in after the sacrifice and said, I, I'm going to give you a son by this time next year. And I don't know what you come here that you believe in God for, what you're asking God to do. But I come here to tell you by this time next year, if it's a son, if it's a house, if it's a car, if it's a promise, God is about to do it for your life. And I don't know what you believe in God. Because this thing that God is doing is not even me that asks for it. Because you have to understand that it, he could never have no child in the beginning. But God is the one that say, I'm about to do this thing for you. I'm about to bless your life. You didn't ask me to do it, but I'm the one who's going to do it to show you who I am. This promise I'm about to give you is too big for you. It has nothing to do with you. You cannot do it on your own. You do not have the ability or the know-how to be able 
to bring to pass what what I'm being put in your life. He said, I'm the one who introduced it. It was not even in your mind. You couldn't even think about it. You couldn't even do it. But God said, by this time next year, miracles will be seen. Amen. By this time Amen. next year, there is something that God is putting in your heart. There's something that God is putting in your spirit and you can't let go of it. But God said, I'm going to do it. Because guess what? You have to understand that this thing that put in my heart, you see, there's a point where God, what God tells me, it overtakes me. You see, you got to understand that at the beginning of it, they try to make it happen on their own. They try to make a child of their own. But when you try to make it on your own, guess what you do? You create a mess. We mess things up when we try to do things according to the flesh. But now you're in a point where you give up. You say, God, I'm tired. I messed up and I don't know which way to go about it. I'm tired of dreaming. I've been waiting for this thing a long time, but I'm existing. But somewhere along the line, deep in your spirit, even though it didn't happen, it's still in your heart. And the reason that it's still in your heart is because God allowed it to still stay there. There's a dream that's dormant inside of you that you know that you've been waiting for God to do it a long time it has not happened but God is saying I left it in your heart because I let you know that I'm still God and I'm still going to do it and it's by my power it's not by might it's not by power but it's by my spirit said the Lord God there's something that God is going to do that's greater than you and then my God have mercy that's why you come and say God I'd rather give up this dream I rather really let it go, God, because it never happened. But my thing, my God have mercy. But guess what God is saying? See, when the time is near for God to do something, there's a visitation that God is about to do something. When God is about to bless you, he sends somebody close to you. You see, it was the time that Abraham was about to, my God, my God, the promise of the child was about to come to pass. And God's spirit, my God, there was, my God, there's a visitation that's going to come up. There's a saying that's going to come up to let you know that it's close by. It's about to happen. It's about to pop off. God is about to do it right now. God always sends somebody to tell you no, that my God, you see the thing about it, it is so unbelievable because I let it go. But God, it is so unbelievable because I stopped dreaming about it. I stopped hoping about it. I stopped thinking about it. But guess what the attitude of Sarah. Now look at this. He said, now your wife Sarah will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent which was behind him. Abram, Abraham and Sarah were already very old and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Now look at this now. That God is so much God that he can wait till you old. What is old? I don't got the strength to do it on my own. I don't got the power and the ability to make it capacity. You see, when you're old, you need somebody to hold you. You need somebody to help you. You see, God is saying you were too strong for it to happen on your own. Because if it happened earlier, you think you did it. But God said, I'm waiting till you're tired, till you need somebody to help you, till you need somebody to guide you. God had to humble you. That's why he told Moses, see, God humbled us these years in the wilderness to let you know that I am your provider. I am your healer. I am your way maker. I'm the God that bless you. I'm the God that healed you. There's a point in your life where you're too prideful, you're too strong, and you think it's about you. But God said, I'm God. I can outweigh you. I can hold back my God till it make it to come to pass. Even if you're a hundred, I still can bless you. But I'm going to wait till you know that, hey, my God, that this thing that's going to happen is not on your own power. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that you got tired. You tired. You tired. There's a point in your life you say, God, I'm tired because I cannot do it in my, my own point. And guess what the Bible says? That Abraham and Sarah were past childbearing ages. Doesn't matter if you pass the age. It doesn't matter what, 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 what is it that means that, 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 that you pass the age. You can no longer bear fruits. But God is going to cause you to bear fruit. You left this dream alone. You left the hope alone. 
You say, God, I'll never be happy. I never had peace. I never had joy. Never get the house. Never get the car. Never get the baby. I never get married. I never get this. But guess what? You see, you pass the age. You no longer worry about those things. What does that mean? They, they forgot. You see, when you pass for an age, you're not worried about having no kid. It's not in your mind. This thing that God is about to do, it's not even in your mind anymore. You know what God did? See, the last disappointment got it out of you completely. The last thing that you've been through, you say, man, forget it. You know what? When we go and serve God, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Past the age. You pass the time. Look at what Abraham said. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought. She was thinking, she began to laugh. <laughs> there are some things that God tells you that he's going to do that makes you laugh. Yes. There are some ways that God tells you he's going to bless you that it makes you laugh. There are some things that God told you he's going to do for your life. You say, me, God, that's not God. That's somebody else talking to me. That's somebody putting, and God began to tell you, yeah, this is going to happen. You're going to get married. You're going to get a child. And you're going to do this. You're going to have your own business. Your life going to be better. And you don't see your life getting any better. And you say to yourself, man, I, that's not God. I, I, I really don't think it's God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you, know, you know, the man of God is saying all these things. You know, the word of God. God is coming forth in my life. I don't believe God is going to do this for me. God is going to give you something that make you laugh. Have you ever laughed when somebody tells you something? Make you smile? I can imagine Abraham saying, hey, he don't know what he's talking about. My body dead. <laughs> my body dead. And Sarah couldn't have no kids anyway. So guess what? God's going to tell, tell you something that makes you laugh. God's going to tell you something. See, have you ever heard something that is too good to be true? Yes. Especially when the time has passed. Especially when you gave up the dream. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, come on. Nobody here. When you give it up, you know, you, you fine with it. It didn't happen, I'm fine with it. I learned to deal with it. Yes. I learned to get over it. Mm -hmm. I learned to say, okay, life goes on. God, look at this. Have nothing to do with you. It didn't happen. I'm good. I'm fine. It's okay. But in the midst of you living life, God will pop up. In the midst of you going on with your life, and God now begin to bring it to pass again. Begin to tell you what he going to do. He begin to tell you which way he going to do it. I'm like, God, it's okay. I'm fine. I'm okay with it not happening. Amen. I, I, I'm fine with it not being a certain way. Then God began to talk, you know I'm going to do this for you now. You know, I said, God, I was fine until you brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was fine until you start speaking to me about hope and dreams and me being something more than what I am right now. Me going greater than what I am right now. Now look at this here. Sarah began to laugh. This laughter was like, yeah, really? <laughs> me having a kid, right? And say, what, really? Have I a child now that I'm old? You see that, right? I can believe God can do it when I'm young. But how, how is it now, I'm past that age of childbearing, that God going to do it? Can I tell you something? There are some things that God is going to do for you that is past the time. You forgot about it. You don't think God is ever going to bless you again. You don't think God is ever going to turn your life around again. You were fine with it. But what God is saying that, I'll wait until you give up. Oh, you better hear me. I waited till you put it down in the altar. Mm -hmm. I waited till that, because that thing that was in your heart was an idol. I waited for it to die. Now it's about to spring forth. 
Now it's about to happen. Now it's going to be the time where I bless you. Now it's going to be the time where I heal you. Now it's going to be the time where you have peace. Now it's going to be the time where you got joy. Now it's going to be the time where you financially well off. Now it's going to be the time that doors are open for you. Now it's going to be the time. Because guess why? Because now you're depending on me and not on yourself. You're depending on my power but not your ability. God is saying, now is the time, my God, because I'm going to do something that make you laugh. I'm going to do something for you that nobody has ever thought that, come on now, I will ever do in your life. They've seen your pain. They've seen your tears. They've seen your broken down. But now they're about to see your resurrection. They're about to see you being blessed. They're about to come on now. They laughed at you because you had the dream and you let your dream die. But now, said the Lord God, I'm about to bless you now. Now I'm about to bring you out. Now I'm about to free you. Now I'm about to do some things. And I know you heard me. And I know my God you heard the word that I told you that I was going to do. But now I'm going to bring it to pass. And I know Kowasaya. Now I'm going to break the doors free for you. Now I'm going to open doors. Now I'm going to bless you. Now I'm going to give you favor. Now I'm going to open doors to you. Now I'm going to do things for you that you never thought. It's your time. And I know that it looked like it will never happen. But God is saying, now set the Lord. Now it's going to happen. And I know you cried. And I know you've been through some stuff. And I know you believe God for it. And people, and even when you told people God going to do it, and it never happened. You had to walk around with your head down. But what God is saying, you're no longer going to walk around with your head down. Because I'm going to bless you like you've never been blessed before. I'm going to do something for you that makes you laugh right now. I'm going to do something because what I'm about to do for you, you don't even believe it. You don't even know I can do it for you. It's making you laugh about what I'm about to do for your life. Look at this. After I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Look at what she said. Now that I'm worn out and my husband is old, will I now have this pleasure? See that, right? What happened? What happened? That was her desire. But she gave up. How many of you had the desire, but you gave up because it didn't happen the first time? Or it didn't happen when you thought it should happen. It didn't happen when you wanted to. Got in the first marriage. Thought that was it, but that wasn't. God had more for you. Thought it was Jimmy. But it's Johnny. <laughs> God had more for you. Now you're in a place, I'm good. I'm good. Whatever. And then now God is coming and bringing up an old issue that he told me before. Before I had faith for it. Before I believed for it. Man, when he first told me, oh yeah, God, oh yeah. But as time went on, thank God crazy. And guess what Hagar said? Uh, Sarah said, Sarah said, once you get Hagar, let's help God out. <laughs> let's create our own dream. Let's create a substitute. That's not the man, let's get another man. I can't have the, the dream one. I can't have the one God told me. So let me grab one that he didn't tell me so at least we can be satisfied. At least I got something because I was shooting up my mouth telling everybody what God said. So let me grab somebody so I don't look bad. I was good with the substitute. Oh yeah, in verse 17, he said, may that Ishmael live before God. 
But God is too much God to let you live with a substitute. God wants to give you the best of what he has. Now look at this. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, well, I have really have a child now that I'm old? Look at this here. Is anything too hard for the Lord? What is it that you feel that God cannot do for you this morning? What miracle that you don't think God can, oh God, I don't think I'll ever be happy. Is there anything too hard? Oh God, you can't heal me. Is there anything too hard for God? What is it that you believe in for this morning that you don't think that God can open the doors and bless you and heal you and do all kinds of things? Is there anything too hard? Can I tell you something? The church is in a place they don't want to believe no more. Because the last time you believed it didn't happen. But is there anything, the question this morning is, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything that God cannot do? Is there anything to heart for God this morning? What is it that you say, I will never dream no more or have hope no more that God cannot do? I love God. I love him with all my heart. But I'm living in the church with disappointment from the last time I believed. I'm disappointed because last time I believed it didn't happen. I didn't get healed. I didn't get the man. I didn't get the job. I didn't get this. So guess what? God, I'm good. I believe you. It's not your fault. But let me sit here and just exist. I don't want to believe no more. I don't want to have faith for anything no more. I don't want to try anything no more. Because why? Because I don't want to be no longer disappointed. But this morning, our hope was in our own self, but not in God. Because is there anything too hard for God this morning? Is there anything that God cannot do this morning? If you put it in the heart of the Lord, if you trust God with all your heart, if you trust God with all your being, God is all consuming fire. There's nothing too hard for God this morning. And I hear the Spirit saying this morning, you got to pick up your dream. You got to pick up your hope. You got to pick up those things that you lay down again. And don't give up and begin to wild up. Because that's why he's talking to you about the blessing of the Lord. Make it rich and add it no sorrow. Because God wants us to rise up and have faith. And have faith that is on fire. And say, my God is able. My God can do it. Yes, I had disappointment. Yes, I had things that made me discouraged. And don't want to try no more. And don't want to move. But I hear God saying this morning, I just don't want you to exist. I want you to live now. I want you to live in faith. Live and believe it. Live in the things that you never thought could be possible I can do for you this morning. Open doors and live again and dream again. So what? That's why God is looking this morning for the Joseph. The Joseph that dared to dream again and believe again and rise up again. Because nothing shall be impossible to those who believe this morning. Ah, uh, God ready to make you laugh. God is ready to make you laugh and God is ready to take you in places and thoughts that you never thought that God can do. But God is saying, raise up because guess what? You can be in the church and your faith is dead. You can be in the church, you can lift up your hands, you can worship, you can dance, you can preach and you can teach and you're dead. You're dead inside. You have no desire, no future, no nothing. But what God is saying, believe me again. Dream again. Know I can do it. And that's a bunch of you settling. You're settling for things. Settling for half of the relationship, half of the career, and half of the things that God wants to give you more. But what God is saying this morning, it's time for you to take a step where you don't know where you're going. 
It's time for you to not settle and know that, that there's more. You see, some of y'all are settling and knowing there's more for you. There's more. But you're going to have to take a step. You're going to have to trust God. You're going to have to be lonely for a while. You're going to have to go through for a while. You're going to have to give up some things to make a step on that boat. You see, you have to think about it. Peter was in a, was in a, was in a storm, and Jesus was walking, and he said, Bid me to come, Lord. And guess what? He, he stepped out and took one step and began to look back at the situation. You got to hope again. You got to get up again this morning. Because nothing is too hard for God. Look at this. I will return to you at the appointed time next year. And shall we have a son? Right? He said, I will return to you by this time next year. And what? Sarah will what? Have a son. What am I saying to you? Heaven is very distinctive of what it has for you. This is a time where God is going to reveal his intention about you. What you're supposed to have instead of what you settled for. This is a time to dream dreams and live to the fullness that God will have you to be. Is it the time to do the things that you could never do? This is a time to step out on faith like you've never stepped out before. This is a time to just trust Him and believe Him knowing that he got you in the season, knowing that he has your back in the season. It's a time to start the business. It's a start, time to go back to school. It's the time to start the career. It's the time to do all those things that you believe in God to do, and knowing that what he has. Look what Sarah said. Sarah was afraid. So she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. But yes, what? You did laugh. So guess what? God in the season is going to make you laugh. It doesn't matter if you don't believe it, Sarah. It's still going to happen. Because I have a purpose. And I have a plan for your life. I got a direction for your life. I know which way you're supposed to go. I know which direction. You see, God has already said it more for you. God already made the plan. And sometimes your plan has to die so that God's plan can come to pass. Can somebody say amen? amen. Sometimes your plan have to die. So that what? God's plan. From the past. While y'all die, there's going to be pain. There's going to be tears. There's going to be indecision. I don't know God. I don't know what you're going to do, which way you're going to do it, but I know God, I'd rather go ahead with you than stay stagnant. Judy, among the gods. 